these are some lovely lavender ones. Now this is a really cheap and thrifty craft. They make great little gifts and really we need some smell vision so you can smell how beautiful these smell. They're a great little gift for mom, teacher, a friend at the end of summer and I think they're super, super cute. Now I've made these before so I'm sharing the same video again because I think quite a lot of you have missed it and I really wanted you to see them because this is such a lovely weaving craft. So come on, let's take a look and see how they're made. First thing you need to do is, is cut some lavender. Now my lavender is actually quite thin, so it really depends on um, how, how bushy it is, how many stalks you have. I've got seven here. If your stalks are really bushy, five are enough. If you're really, really thin, nine might be better. In fact, nine might be better for these, but let's just see. Um, also, you need to have them as long as possible. Now these are a tiny bit on the short side. They'll be fine. We'll be able to make our lavender ones, but if you can have them, I don't know, up to about here, a bit better. You can always trim them afterwards. So the first thing you need to do, firstly, it's ideal that you get them after they've blossomed. Well, they're down here, they're still blossoming. But again, I just wanted to show you these now because they're so cute. So you take off all the extra little bits. If you want, you can keep those because leaves actually smell quite nice too. And they dry well, so you can add them into lavender sachets. So I'm just pulling off all the little bits. The important thing is to do these, make these relatively fresh after you've picked your lavender because you still want this to be flexible and not break. Because these, for example, are really dry and they would break now if I try to make um, a lavender wand from scratch. So the first thing is you line them all up, like there's the bottom bits. It doesn't matter if some of them are bigger or smaller. It's actually, you know, it's fine. You take your ribbon and you tie it around the bottom. So I'm going to just do that like this. Now, as with many of these things, the beginning is always the fiddliest and once you get going it definitely gets easier so I'm just going to tie it on like that push it right to the bottom so now you're ready now the thing that people always get few confused about lavender wands is where do I start what you actually do with a lavender wand is you fold them over and when you're weaving you're weaving them down here we go so this one's over put another one and then this one so I've got my ribbon under that one and the next one down I'm going to have to go over. Now remember it's important to have an uneven number of stalks in order to allow you to go round and round. The next stalk goes over the ribbon like that and the next stalk goes under the ribbon. Now I just wanted to show you this. You can probably see that this one's cracked a little bit. Don't worry, keep going. It should be fine. As long as it's not snapped off completely, you're all right. Next one goes over the rhythm. So like with weaving, you've got over, under, over, under. Next one goes under the ribbon. Next one goes over the rhythm. The ribbon. Here we go. And then you're back at the beginning. Now it's time for that one to go under, which is nice because it works. And here is where the weaving starts. And you can tuck your lavender pods in as you go. So it's actually, you can see, the next step is always a bit easier because your sticks are already aligned. Here we go. So over, can you see? Going over and then under the stalk. Over the stalk. And then, where is it? This one's next. Under the stalk. Sometimes the stalks move so it looks like not in line, so you just have to make sure you get the right one. So this one I want to go under, so I have to pull it out. And then every so often I give it a little tug, I don't know if you can see it, just to give them all in place. Over, under. Ideally, the lavender should have flowered already. Again, that's partly a so the bees get to have a go at the lavender and enjoy it because obviously we don't want to take it away from the bees. They do need it. And secondly, um, also means that it's sort of on the stage to getting dry. So you don't really want wet, wet lavender. You do want it dry. So ideally, once it's bloomed, 
and sort of lost a little bit of its colour, that's when you start making it. So I probably did it a little bit too early, but it should just about be okay. And because there's enough gaps, it should be able to dry. Don't use wet lavender. So anyway, so now you can see I've done that bit. And then to finish it off, all I do is I wrap the ribbon round and I tie it off like so. And then if you want, you can, but I, you know, I haven't done it with most of these. You could actually just keep wrapping the ribbon all the way down like this and you could make a you know then then the sticks so to speak it doesn't matter if they get dry over time because they won't break i mean but that's totally up to you it's just another little thing you can do to make your lavender ones you know pretty but i quite like the stalk sticking out there you go and actually when i said my stalks were too short they weren't really were they that is how you make a lavender wand so here they are again, aren't they lovely? So I do hope that you have a go because this is such a lovely summer craft. Uh, and in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, all that kind of stuff because of course we'd love to see you here again. Above all, keep watching, keep making and take care. Bye.